The Book of Esther is set during the reign of Xerxes I, or Ahasuerus, in the period of Persian dominance over the world. Xerxes I was the king who battled the 300 Spartans, and he probably looked more like this than this. He also had a really bad temper. Once, as he was preparing to fight the Greeks, a flood came and washed away the bridge he had just built over the river, and he had one of his slaves take a whip and strike the river hundreds and hundreds of times as punishment for knocking down his bridge. Now, the Book of Esther is the first book to refer to God's people as Jews, and this is because God's people in the book were mainly made up of the people of Judah at this point. Benjamin was also grouped in with Judah, and Esther was from the tribe of Benjamin. Now, in chapter 1, Xerxes holds a big wild party for all of his nobles, and he calls for Queen Vashti to come out and strip dance for him and his several hundred drinking buddies, but she refuses. So his buddies tell him that if he doesn't punish her, then all women in Persia will follow her example and disobey their husbands, and they recommend to Xerxes that he get a new queen, and Xerxes agrees. So Xerxes needed a new queen, so all the virgin girls of the region were gathered together and brought to his palace for a beauty contest. Enter Esther, a Jew. Her real name was Hadassah, and she was raised by her older cousin Mordecai, who was a palace guard. And Esther was prepped and pampered for a year, and she ended up making it to the final round. And Xerxes was stunned by her beauty and chose her to be his new queen. But Esther kept her nationality a secret. Later on, two men named Teresh and Bigthan tried to assassinate King Xerxes, but Mordecai learned of their plot and reported it to Esther, who in turn reported it to the king. And the two assassins were then executed, and for the time being, Mordecai continued on with his normal palace duties. Now in chapter 3, we're introduced to the character of Haman, who's the king's second in command. He is referred to as an Agagite, a descendant of Agag. Now in 1 Samuel, we learn that this group of people had been allowed to survive by King Saul against the orders of God. And as Haman, the Agagite, Agagai rides through the streets, the people bow down before him, but Mordecai refuses to bow, and so Haman holds a grudge against Mordecai. He's filled with fury, and when he's back home, he brags to his family about all his own greatness, but he gets all depressed when he thinks of Mordecai's defiance. And so Haman and his family plot against Mordecai, but the revenge is not only on Mordecai, but on all Jews, and Haman petitions Xerxes, telling him about a race of thugs out to assassinate him. And so Xerxes makes a decree, granting all Persians permission to slaughter slaughter all the Jews in the area. Haman rolls the dice to decide the date on which the edict will go into effect, and it comes out to February 13th. The edict is then signed with the irrevocable seal of the Medes and the Persians, and the Jews mourn over the edict and Mordecai sends a message to Esther asking her to plead with the king to change his mind. His words echo Samuel's words to Saul. If you don't do what God has called you to do, God will punish you and replace you with someone willing. Interestingly enough, Esther and Saul were both from the tribe of Benjamin, and Mordecai says perhaps you were born for such a time as this. And so Esther appears before Xerxes uninvited. Now the usual punishment for this act was the death penalty, but Xerxes extends his golden scepter, a sign of protection, and he lets Esther approach. Esther then invites Xerxes and Haman to a dinner party that night. Xerxes and Haman are pleased to be honored by the queen, and after dinner, Esther invites them both back again tomorrow night for another dinner party. Haman leaves in good spirits, but passes Mordecai on his way home and becomes angry again. He then decides he can't wait until the edict goes into effect, and he goes back to the palace to get the king's permission to kill Mordecai early, and he tells his servants to construct a pole 50 cubits high on which to impale Mordecai. Now, meanwhile, Xerxes Xerxes is trying to fall asleep, and he's listening to the scribes read the royal records to him, and they end up reading about that one time Mordecai saved the king's life, and the king wonders why Mordecai was never rewarded for that. Xerxes then notices Haman standing outside, and he sends him in, but Xerxes cuts Haman short and asks him how to go about honoring somebody very special, and Haman, being very vain, thinks the king is talking about him, and so he tells the king that this special guy ought to be dressed in royal robes and given a crown to place on his head, and that a prince should put him on a royal horse and march him through the streets, proclaiming this is how the king treats those who please him. And Xerxes agrees, and he tells Haman to do all that for Mordecai. Xerxes also chooses Haman to be the prince leading Mordecai's parade. Now after the parade, Haman arrives at the second dinner party, and Esther begins her revelation. She says, I and my people have been sold to be destroyed. By who? By this vile Haman. Xerxes is shocked, and he goes out into the garden to think. At this point, Haman falls upon Esther, begging for mercy. Xerxes returns and sees what appears to be Haman attacking his queen, and he orders the guards to seize Haman. Suddenly, a servant delivers a report that the pole that Haman had prepared for Mordecai to be impelled on has been completed, and so Xerxes impales Haman on it. 
Esther asks Xerxes to repeal the Edict of Genocide against her people. Xerxes instead makes a new edict which provides all Jews with weapons to defend themselves and gives them special permission to execute any of their enemies in the land. And on February 13th, the edict goes into effect and the Jews slaughter all of their enemies who had conspired against them. Many people from other nationalities decide to become Jews themselves before this takes place. On the day of this battle, the Jews were saved from destruction and established a new festival to be celebrated on February 14th and 15th. This festival came to be known as Purim and is still celebrated today. In the end, Haman was impelled on the pole prepared for Mordecai, and Mordecai was promoted to the job that had been prepared for Haman. And Esther saved her people from destruction.